All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and uh, this is part two of the comparison of the Shure PSM-1000 analog uh, wireless belt pack in-ear setup to the Electrosonics M2 Duet uh, digital wireless belt pack setup. Um, I've done a bunch of comparisons. If you haven't watched part one, you should do that, as this will make a lot more sense. I'm comparing with pink noise, with Pulse, we're looking at RTA, um, spectrum and um, transfer functions, uh, differences in frequency response with volume and headphone outs versus the pack outs and um, uh, pretty much anything that I can find and detect that you wouldn't normally see in a spec sheet. Um, stuff that you run into in real world and you can determine whether or not these are things that are important to you. Uh, both of them have awesome feature sets um, and um, you know one's digital one's analog and the differences between. All right so let's get into it. Yeah the, the frequency response changes as I drive the input to the sure harder if I turn it down a lot, it's got a similar response to the duet. Duet. God, I keep saying that. Um, and as I drive it hard, and I'll save. Let's go ahead and save that. Here. And then I will bring this up and turn the output down. And driving the input hard gives us a different response there. Okay, let's look at the front panel. Uh, the front panel of the Shure does not alter its frequency response as I raise and lower the input level. So it maintains a stable response like the duet did. And um, so the only thing that's really changing with frequency response, getting the best frequency response that sure is running a low level to the input. Uh, what else do we got? Let's go ahead and save that. And what can we do now? We did RTA, we did pink in the front all the way through. We did the transfer function, we did pink transfer. Polarity, we saw the polarity reverse on the headphone out. That was kind of interesting. Uh, latency, we've looked at latency. Frequency response, output levels. Let's take a look at output levels. So for that adventure, I might clip this, but we'll have to look at it on the um, uh, scope. Let's go ahead and turn that up. And we'll put that on pulses because it's more fun. All right, so now I'm clipping the input to the uh, electrosonics, and we can see those waveforms are pretty big there. I'm going to go ahead and crunch them down. And I'll leave them there, and then we'll plug into the Shure. And also, we can look at the Shure waveforms, because I didn't really do that before. And the Shure waveform will look quite different, as we're seeing here. So the, the Shure waveform, instead of it looking exactly like what's sent into it, it's um, going up, and let's spread this out a little bit. Make sure we're in polarity here, which we are. So the way we can tell if we're in polarity is the very first thing. This is this first part of the blue is going down, and we can see it goes down first, and then it comes up and bounces it around, and this one goes up. So the very leading edge, it should follow the um, the same thing as the square wave, which should follow the same thing as what's sent into the unit. So we've got the square wave with the leading edge up. We've got this sawtooth-ish thing that's coming out of the mixing board, leading edge up, and we've got the belt pack. All right, so um, that's the same level. I expanded the rain. Let's see what happens if I drive it harder. All right, and we can hear that. So right there, we're getting into the yellow lights on the, on the transmitter. Um, the actual output level achievable. The, the um, sheer volume of the Shure pack is considerably louder than the um, um, electrosonic. So if you actually need more volume, um, that could be helpful. I 
have them both set. I have Electrosonic set as high as it'll get. I don't know if I have the Sure set as high as it get. It might be able to get higher. But um, what else do we got? Uh, noise. We saw some noise on the Electrosonics. I've got my notes over here. Um, that's at high level. Let's bring this down. Let's turn these up. Okay, so there's um, the output of the electrosonics and the input to the electrosonics. And here's the Shure in the same scenario. Um, and we can see there is some noise on the Shure. Um, and we're seeing uh, a much fuzzier line on the electrosonics like we saw at the front panel as well. Um, so there is some digital or some high frequency. The front panel on the electrosonics is actually very noisy and out of polarity as we noticed before. Um, and then the front panel of the Shure unit. Um, okay, maximum level. Uh, what else do we got? Um, oh, and then headphone drops. We did headphone drops earlier. We could do that with pulse and look at it on the scope. So let's try that again. And uh, we definitely saw a jump there, and that's the one that we saw the big jump with on the um, Shure unit. In the front panel of the Electrosonics, we see no change in level with the belt pack of the Electrosonics. See a slight change, and with the belt pack of the Shure, we see a slight change. Okay, so for this next test, let's um, take a look at the stereo separation of the um, digital versus analog and um, on the front panel versus the belt packs. The transmitting uh, stereo can be a bit of a challenge and so let's take a look um, when something doesn't have a lot of stereo separations early belt packs and lower cost ones when you pan something all the way to one side it's still coming out the other ear at a noticeable level and you can hear this um, it's something I've noticed uh, quite a while ago with the difference between the Shure PSM 600 which had a very wide separation and the 700s which had a much narrower stereo separation. So let's look at the 1000 versus the M2 Duet. Um, we'll start with what I've got is I've got a, a switcher set up here where I can um, flip this switch and in one position it'll send all of the pink noise to uh, the left side of the in-ear inputs and nothing to the right and when I switch it the other way it'll send everything to the right and nothing to the left but we're going to monitor just one side. So when I send it to the opposite side, we'll be able to see how much bleed or how much is um, crossing over. Um, we can bring this up and we can look at, we'll go ahead and send it here. And this is the Sure Pack. And I'm going to set this um, smart system so that up in this high frequency here, uh, let's do 8K or so. I'm going to set it at minus 50 dB. Um, for the scent signal, plus or minus a bit of sound. Um, and there is the Shure belt pack with, um, and I'm going to slow down the um, curve a little bit. Okay, we'll save this. And I'm now going to switch to sending signal down the other ear. You can probably hear it coming out of these headphones here, little hits. And we can see it falling down. And we'll see the amount of bleed that's coming out the other ear. And in a perfect world, this would be silent. We'd be able to pan it all the way over and we can see the difference. So uh, we see the lows are bleeding through, the highs are bleeding through. Uh, I set this at minus 50 at 8K, 8K, and so now it's at minus 84, so it's about 34 dB of um, separation or reduction on that at 8K. Um, here it's minus 74 versus 
minus 55, 65, so only about 20 dB down at 64 hertz. Um, and we're seeing the sound that bleeds through to the other side. It's got a bit of a curve to it. Um, you know, whether or not this matters too much, um, it's just important to realize that um, you're going to have to pan things harder and you can't pan them quite as far as you normally would if there was more separation. Let's look at that compared to the front panel of the Shure. Um, there's the front panel. We can see that there's more separation there. I'll save that. And if we go to double check the direct send, uh, I can match these headphone outs a little better here. And since I've changed this level, we can go back here and look at this. And there she goes, falling down. And I'll save this curve. So you can see that there's more separation on the front panel than there is on the pack. Um, I can get rid of that curve there. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the duet. duet. Um, first we'll go to the pack. And we'll send the level. And we'll set this at minus 50 at 8K. 53. Ooh, I'm going to have to turn it up a little bit. There's about minus 50. Now it's actually showing a higher average, so I'm not, so if that's, since their frequency response is a little different, I'm going to match up the bulk of it there. And let's use a different frequency for this. Um, but you can see the other curves. We'll save that. And that's about minus 52 at 4K. And when I switch it to send on the other channel, we'll see how much bleed happens here. Um, Crosstalk, I guess you would call it. Uh, well, it's much flatter and it's much lower. It's all the way down there. We can save that. And did I say, and I saved the other one is the brown one. Okay, great. And then let's go finally to the front panel of the um, duet. And it looks very similar to the pack. And we'll save that. And now switching over and taking a look at the um, crosstalk at the front panel. That's interesting. I'm going to get rid of the um, other curves so we can see a little more clearly. Um, if I look at... There's the duet in blue versus green. So there's actually this crosstalk. There's some high frequency differentials in the crosstalk. Overall though, the, the if we look at just the... Um, um, we can see the front panel uh, we can see the belt pack of the Shure is the highest crosstalk. The front panel of the Shure is lower. Um, the lowest is actually the belt pack of the Duet. And um, the front panel of the Duet has got some high frequency added um, stuff there. All right, cool. Well, that takes care of our crosstalk test. Um, the overall view of this is that... Um, you know, they're both, um, I know the Shure, I'm familiar with these, they sound good, and um, the, elect the electrosonics are uh, showing up very well. Uh, what's fascinating to me is just how different they are. Um, you know, there's more high frequency available in the Shure, but it's more consistent in the electrosonics. Uh, it's flatter throughout all volume levels, where the Shure changes with volume levels. Um, the front panel of the electrosonics is probably not um, as good as it could be, but um, who's going to use that anyways? Typically, you're going to wear a belt pack 
and send to that if you're a monitor engineer. So it's more of just a plug and reference, make sure things are working. Um, same thing with the sure front panel. There's not a lot of attention put to those outputs by either manufacturer and um, um, it's not a deal breaker there. Uh, the digital stuff, you can get more channels that lock in better um, and easier to find frequencies and get them dialed in, but you pay the price of battery life and um, latency versus the analog with the extended battery life and lower latency. Making the choice uh, based on your application and um, I'm going to do a video on handheld, well not handheld, uh, wireless mic transmitters. I'll probably use, I'll use the belt packs because I can get into them easier with the test gear. Uh, that'll be my next adventure. Cool. I uh, hope you found this interesting and thanks for joining me.